I grew up my whole life. I lived like an hour and a half north of Milwaukee. I lived in Oshkosh. But if you want to play basketball, you you got to go, go through Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yeah. You ain't got no choice. He had a I want to be part of this. He had a I am going to do this. We didn't have to ask him, are you ready to go to practice? He was ready to go. He wanted to conquer this thing called greatness as a young kid. When I got to high school, I started probably taking more serious. I'd like meet with the principal and get like a, a halt, like a morning pass so like the janitors would let me in so mm -hmm. I could get in the gym. I wasn't the kid at the top that was like trying to stay there. I'm the kid that's way at the bottom trying to like chase that. cared more about assists and getting his teammates involved than he did about his points. He never worried about points. I mean, they had to be up a lot in order to get the 10th and the 11th player to, to see the court. He would make sure they got up that so they could get on the court and score. You know, for me growing up, I would say what, what made me different was um, at a young age, I just kind of understood uh, you know, the importance of like team camaraderie and uh, getting everybody involved. I mean, obviously we won a lot. You know, I was a better player growing up, but it was a lot more fun for me to get my teammates involved and see them have success. You know how it is now with grassroots basketball, it's all about the circuit. Mm -hmm. So Nike's obviously the biggest, but there's Adidas, Under Armour, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't do none of that. Like I played with like my local team. Like I had the opportunity to, I could have played Nike, I could have played Under Armour, I could have played Adidas, but I was like, I'm just gonna play with my homies. Cause like I had, I had mid-major offers. I knew I was gonna go to Northern Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I was like, shit, we gonna make it crack there. Like it is what it is. We played my last AU tournament. You know, you go to Vegas, Fab 48. Yeah. No shoe circuits. It's just throw the ball out. There's Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, mm -hmm. we all there. And we played Team Rio, uh, who had Brian Antoine, who's a five-star point guard, and Scotty Lewis, five-star wing. And I cooked them. Yeah. I, I, I played, I had a really good game. We lost, but like every coach in the country, it felt like was there. And so I remember the game got done, and like I, I was like, oh, man, ain't nothing. But in my head, I was like, yo, this is about to go up. This is about to go up. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I had like Nebraska <laughs> offered me, Michigan wanted me to come on a visit, Iowa State offering me, all this stuff kind of coming around. And I was like, and I, I was sick because I couldn't go to Northern Iowa. I knew I was going there since I was like 16. Yeah. So I had to go to, I mean, I didn't have to, but you know, you got to kind of make that move. Bro, when I got to school, I talk about this all the time. Taylor Horn Tucker, we went to school together. Uh, two other guys that were four stars at the time. I remember we were sitting in, a, in one of the uh, seniors' apartments. And they was asking us, like, uh, you know, what's y'all plan? How long y'all think y'all gonna be here? Because we was like the highest recruiting class. And Taylor was like, a year. <laughs> Taylor was like, I'm going to NBA. Like, Tyrese, what you think? <laughs> Some probably have a good four year career. <laughs> <laughs> you know, try to fight to get to the NBA. You know, that was yeah. like my biggest thing. Because, like, you know, dudes from Iowa State, Monte Morris, George Niang, like, they had to fight to get where they are. So his mother and I took him to Iowa State. And I pulled him on the side and I told him, you put your eyes on the best person that's in there. And that's who you challenge. And that's who you go after. Because I did not bring you here to sit on the bench. I brought you here to get on the floor. See, about 13 feet from the bucket on the left baseline. Knocked away, stolen by Oliver. And a great Oliver pass to Seahawks. Far right hand. Okay, up to that point. The break. Oh, good luck by Halliburton. And Lewis scores. Jacobson cross court kick out open. There's another assist for Halliburton. Finds Halliburton. Quick no look pass to Conan for a two-hand block. And there's a score record for assists. I would say the first like stamp I got that I was like, yeah, I'm here was uh we played Kansas, like our first conference game or second conference game at the crib. We beat them by 20. They were top five in the country at the time. 
And I remember Bill Self going through the handshake line was like, you can play anywhere in the country. Like, and he said in the postgame presser, like, that's one of the best backcourts in the country. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, wow. Because again, coming into the year, nobody even know, knew who I was. Yeah. And so now we're only, you know, 13 games in a year and he's already saying that. And I was like, yeah, I know I belong. And from there, it just you know, it took off. Halliburton spinning, flips it up, and he's lost the handle for a moment. Halliburton tips it away. Tyrese Halliburton. Will not return to this game. Halliburton, yes! Trying to get it to Jacobson. Shot from Halliburton. Welcome back. Sports, they're awesome. Injuries, they're not. Today we're reminded of that as Iowa State sophomore guard Tyrese Halliburton, a potential top five pick in this summer's NBA draft, announced that he would be missing the rest of the season with a left wrist fracture. I remember playing K-State, I go up to block a shot and it takes my legs out and I go to catch myself again. Just human instinct, you know? And I, I knew my season was over. I didn't for sure say I was gonna leave. And uh, I remember meeting with Coach Prom at the at our on our exit meeting. And me and my dad in there, and my mom's in there. And I'm like, Coach, I don't really know if I'm gonna leave. He said, well, you're not coming back here. When he decided to go, um, we knew that he was ready then because, you know, we had a talk with Coach Prom and Coach Prom had a talk with me and told me that he's ready, John. You know, he said, I hate to lose him, but it, it, it's time for him to go. Yeah, so my emotions on draft night, um, there was a lot of them. You know, I think I just kept telling myself and telling everybody, like, I'm not going to cry. Like, I'm just, I'm excited, you know. I'm just, I can't wait. You know, it was a different experience. It was different than what anybody's ever had to go through. Everybody else gets to, you know, go to New York, get the, uh, the, the five-star treatment, get to shake commissioner's hand. ESPN to the top, like the top guys who are gonna be on the camera, they, they sent a car to everybody's house. So I had a dude in my garage, right, with all the wires hooked up to a car with a big satellite in, the, in, the, uh, in my driveway. I put my suit on and sat on my couch in my living room, but I liked that because it was just unique. You know, I, I got to enjoy it with my, all my family and friends. Man, the, it was crazy because I'm sitting here in my in my couch and uh, my fam with me, my girl with me, my brothers with me, um, and every pick going by, we're just looking at it. I'm looking over my agent because, I mean, going into the draft, I was like, you know, Jay Billis does his like best available, yeah. and I was fourth. He could have gone number two overall. I know that the Warriors loved him. He could have gone, you know, number four, number five. There are all kind of spots that he could have gone, but for whatever reason. The way that the draft played out was shocking. I honestly think that someday there will be a 30 for 30 made on Tyrese's draft night. <laughs> it's one of the more confounding things that has happened uh, for him to fall to the Kings. With the 12th pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Sacramento Kings select Tyrese Halliburton from Iowa State University. I've personally spoken to teams that drafted 13, 14, 15, whose general managers and head coaches have told me personally, when we saw he was available at 10, we started crossing our fingers and saying a lot of prayers. The Kings got the steal in the draft. He's not a guy that's gonna take years to develop. You already see the basketball IQ. The only question was, would it translate? A lot of things to look forward to, you know, off the court, but on the court as well. I'm, I'm ready for the, these challenges and ready to, you know, get started. Coach Tim Gergerich, who's like the mentor of NBA basketball, one of the best assistant coaches ever, he had had a chance to see Tyrese before play. And the first thing he said was, don't mess with his shot. So the whole time when I first got with him and just giving him the ball, the first thing I noticed and came back to my head was everything Coach Gerg had said to me was, don't mess with his shot. And in the minute we started working out, he rattled off like 10 straight. And I was like, okay, I'm definitely not messing with the shot. Talking to him that first day on the court, what was his goals, what was his dreams, wanted to see where he wanted to go. He has a maturity about him that's ready to work. When I saw that we had drafted Tyrese, I, I liked him. Not to mention, it just happens to be that he has the ability to mix with your star in De'Aaron Fox in a really good way. I thought for sure we could play together because like I, I played the two like I had to so it was like 
Now it's just kind of getting back to what I've done before I know what I'm doing to be, to be the two guard. I was definitely excited for the fit. I mean, he's someone who can play both on and off the ball. I mean, he's long, tall, can shoot the ball. I mean, he does everything at a really high level. When you have sort of the veteran voice of the team befriending and guiding and mentoring your rookie, that's a good sign both directions. It seems to me the more you get to know him, the more impressed you are with him. Against Booker, gives it up to Halliburton, five on the shot clock. Got to get busy with it. Halliburton on glass, got it. Halliburton across the midcourt line. Will launch, got a clean look. Halliburton got it. By the way, it was the fourth Pacers foul. Mm. Halliburton a deep three. And when I got there my rookie year, I, come, I was like, whatever they need me to do, I'm gonna do. So I came off the bench and, uh, and it was a it was a fun growing experience. I learned a lot. He likes not to try and post up Mannion. Step back three on the way. Foul! Count it! Let's go for four! And all the basketball. Oh, yeah. oh basketball. basketball. Halliburton punching it home. Drive, kick, Tyree, three. Bang! I would say I had a lot of success early in my rookie year. And that's just kind of, I was like, man, I really feel like I belong. You know, I really feel like I can uh, be a good player in the league. And I wouldn't say to where I am now, I didn't really have that feeling until like my second year. Here's Halliburton, 35 already tonight for him. Gotta get one off soon. Tough shot behind the backboard and Halliburton hits it. I was like, whoa, like that's the first time I've ever really felt that way about my, my game before. Like I really feel like I can be like really special. Back with breaking news from the NBA as the trade deadline approaches. The Indiana Pacers continue to make moves. Our agent Wardenowski reports Indiana trading Demona Sabonis, Justin Holiday, and Jeremy Lamb to the Sacramento Kings for Tyrese Halliburton, Buddy Field, and Tristan. What's the instant reaction around the league to Sacramento trading Tyrese Halliburton? Stunned. I mean, Tyrese Halliburton was stunned, Malika. Uh, the league is stunned at this trade and the fact that he was even available. This was a player who everyone had thought, including Tyrese Halliburton, that he'd be the cornerstone for their future. Welcome to Indiana. Yeah, What has the last couple of days been like for you? Uh, it's been a whirlwind. It's uh, been crazy, a lot of emotions, but uh, I'm excited to be here and excited to get started. So, uh, it's such a reality check, man. We getting that call, it was like the first time in my in my basketball career, probably since like high school, because you know when you're high school, you know you're a highly recruit, you're a recruited kid, like people, everybody shows you love, like you're on top of the world. And it was the first time I felt like unwanted. <laughs> Pack a suitcase to get on the plane in the morning. Uh, you land, go get your MRIs and stuff. Practice the next day, and I think we played the day after that. Um, and again, just so much anger that I'm having to like suppress and and, and not show because. At the end of the day, although Sack got rid of me, Indy's happy to have me. You know, my, the, my new teammates are excited. Everybody's excited. It's a new start. Now Halliburton, he's going to toss it up and hits his first shot as a member of the Pacers. Nice pass. Smith pounds it down. They trapped it a little bit. What a pass. Halliburton cutting is Taylor. But it's going to be exciting to see Halliburton and Torte. Oh, look at that pass. But he is the prototypical five now with that size and quickness. Oh, look at that pass. You get a team right at eight. The team can be a little bit of a problem. No look delivered on time, on target. I was just playing. Like, I was just out there just trying to play and show who I am because now I'm getting the opportunity to, I'm a, the full-time guy. There's no, there's nobody else. Like, if I mess up, I, I'm playing through mistakes more. I'm, 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 I'm forced to. I'm, I'm being looked at to take game-winning shots and like, I ain't never been looked at to do that in my life. You know what I mean? I've never been asked to do that. Here's a long three. Halliburton got it! Yeah! Halliburton. Oh, he's looking for help. Cool. 6'9 and 6'10. Oh, Halliburton throws it down. Halliburton inside, puts it up and in. Make it work, Tyrese. Here comes Halliburton in transition around the back. No look to Matherin. What a dime from Tyrese Halliburton. He's got it. He knows he's got it. He had it the whole time. Buddy Hill was back there with Nimhart. They were able to get it. And no look gets it to on the other end. Nice face. Even Halliburton.
Hartford like that one. A Hartwood hero in the heartland and a first time all-star. He runs the show for the Indiana Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton. At all-star, you know, that's when you get to take a step back and really get to reflect on what's going on. It's just like, phew. Wow. You know what I mean? Can't even believe that this is happening. Uh, but, man, it just means the world to me. And the fans have been awesome to me. Our, our organization has been awesome to me. And uh, we definitely feel the love. And it's just uh, now it's just, you know, about, you know, trying to get wins and, you know, trying to help get Indy back to what they were doing, you know, previously and how I was growing up. And, you know, hopefully, you know, being able to win a championship one day. Maybe their greatest moment in international basketball. The men's team have come out and they have reached the podium. They have won the third place game against the United States. I think the biggest thing that I took away from USA, and I've said this multiple times now, is like, I'm just tired of losing, man. Like, mm -hmm. at, like, USA was kind of the first time that I had real expectations to win something in a long time and still didn't win. So I'm like, I'm coming home, I'm looking at myself in the mirror, I'm like, you gotta change something. Like, something gotta change. Like, maybe it's not you, but it's you. You know what I mean? Like, figure it out. I'm just trying to change some habits to, to win, man, because this losing stuff, it, get, it gets draining for sure. Oh, and one. Yeah, they'll count it. Missed it, blocked by Turner. Running. Great pass. They're eight of 19 for three-point range, five straight points. And Halliburton counted foul, Morgan and Gotti. Off the top. Teardrop off the glass. Halliburton beats Walker, count it, and a foul. I'm just trying to be who I am every day and uh, coming in with Rick and coming into this year, he pulled me aside and was like, hey man, I don't want to call plays anymore. I want you to be yeah, the head of it. it and up. that meant the world to me because if I got trust from him, you know, yeah. like you said, a championship coach. He's been around great, great players. He's coached amazing dudes in this league. If he got trust in me, then how can I not trust myself? In five games, that's five per game. Here's a step back. Halliburton. That's, that going oh, 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 oh. that's a shaking one. Seven to shoot. Halliburton. You gotta go to work. Here's a three. Tyrese. <laughs> you have to go to work. Big hoops. Big hoops. Ooh, that's a big hoop there. Forces a timeout. That is a huge hoop there by Halliburton. Great job by Halliburton. A little ball fake defense there. Let it go, Halley. Got it again, Halliburton. He only shot 41%. Halliburton gets inside. Count it. The Mude the foul. These fans will see a quarterfinal game in the in-season tournament here as Halliburton throws it down. Nah, man, I'm in a good spot right now. I'm in a good place uh, mentally, physically. Uh, I just feel good with my game right now. And it just, I think throughout the season, I just, there's moments right now where I feel like it's just me, uh, the ball, my defender, and nobody else there sometimes. Tyrese Halliburton right now averaging 26.9 points per game, 11.9 assists, 52% from the field. No player has averaged 25 points, 10 assists, and 50% shooting for an entire season. He's like Jason Kidd. Mm. He's like Steve Nash. He gets other people involved. That's why he's leading the league in assists. If this guy averages you know, 25, 26 points a game, 11 assists on 50, 40, 90 shooting splits, you're talking about something that's unprecedented. He's a superstar. I, I, there's no other way to put it. And this ascension from really fun, really good rookie to where he's at now in his fourth year is fairly astonishing. And running. What a scene, what an atmosphere here in Indianapolis tonight. This is going to be fun. Halliburton lights the lamp from deep. Halliburton switching left hand into a good look. Halliburton trying to shake Holiday. Off balance three, and he knocks it down. Seven on the timer. Halliburton trapped. Off balance three, and he puts it in. Upstart Indiana Pacers team. Halliburton pushes. Alley up to top. Oh, no. What a connection. Sensational move from Tyrese Halliburton. 
Pacers clinging to a five-point lead. Halliburton tries another three. Bang! Tyrese Halliburton. Just I don't know what time it is. And us having success has been good because I think it, I feel like it's forced the media to talk about basketball and talk about what's in front of you and not have to talk about legacies and all the, the BS that come with it and talk about actually talk about basketball. So, um, you know, I, I think that's what's been good about us succeeding. And of course, there's going to be the, you know, people have said MVP or All NBA, All Star, whatever, like that happens. But at the end of the day, I just want to play basketball and I want to succeed as a team. I remind him. Tyrese John, when you started this sport, you was playing, you were smiling. You're playing now, I need to see you smile. Because when you smile, that tells me you're saying, Dad, I'm still enjoying myself. When you are not smiling, win or lose, that's telling me, Dad, basketball is beginning to become a job to me. And I don't want it to become a job to you. Because when it becomes a job to you, you start working at it for the wrong reason. But when you enjoy it, you start working with it for the right reason.